Hello, people on the internet, on YouTube, watching Ninjanik videos. It's me, Ninjanik. Oh, who, who would have thought? Uh, and we've got Michael Pramowat versus Fabio Spano. Looks like a Giratina versus uh, Lost Box matchup. I see. Oh, maybe this is Arc Dura. I don't know. Battle VIP pass seems like an odd inclusion in Arctura, right? Right? I don't know. I mean, you guys know. You clicked on the video. You saw my nice thumbnail I made. You guys know better than I do at this point. So it looks like Pram is starting. And yeah, it looks like some sort of lost box deck. So it's probably playing... Oh, it's Gudra! Oh, I love Gudra as a deck. I think it's really cool, but it loses hard to Chien Pao. It, it is not a viable option because of Chien Pao. They just uh, knock you out. Uh, they don't care about your minus 80 if they just have enough energy cards. So anyway, uh, Pram is starting. He is going to start with the Radiant Greninja and put a Battle VIP pass down to grab another two Pokemon straight out of his deck. That will be double Comfey. Uh, Pram is one of the best players in the game, in my opinion. I don't think he's had any more recent regional wins or anything, right? But I, I maybe last season he did. I can't remember. But he's, uh, he's a very good player nonetheless. I remember there was a time I was at an ARG uh, circuit series the day after an invitational. It's the same the same one I talked about in a previous video where I had played Azul. Um, it was a later round than when I played Azul, I believe. I was two, two tables from Pram, like two seats from Pram. And it took them probably 40 minutes to tell us to start playing. Like, they're like, oh, no, we might have to repair, blah, blah, blah. And we just sat there for, like, 30 minutes or something. And the guy sitting in between us was watching the brand new episode of Dragon Ball Super on his phone while we were waiting to be told we could start playing. And that uh, it was the episode where uh, the the girls from, like, I think it's Universe 2, the, the girls who, like, Sailor Moon transform come out and then android 17 blasts them to stop them from transforming and everyone's like no that's unethical you can't do that that's against the spirit of beating the crap out of each other even though whoever uh wins gets to live but you know uh so that was fun so me pram and the guy in between us were all watching that together like <laughs> we watched the entire episode together <laughs> it was so funny But yeah, looks like it is a Lost Box mirror match here. So we are going to find a Greninja and a Comfey off of our own Battle VIP pass here. Pram already has two cards in the Lost Zone. Fabio is going to have to find some more of his own. Does not have anything there yet. Only one Comfey in play is going to have to hard retreat using a Metal Energy to get another couple of cards or another just to get the first flower selecting here. Oh, and let's see. So we put Cramorant in the Lost Zone. So it looks like we are playing two Crams. That is a little bit odd for Lost Box decks today. Uh, in the past, they were always playing two. But these days, they generally only play one. And it looks like just a pass from there. No Gudra on the bench just yet. Uh, so I don't know. This is this is an odd matchup, I think. Because the Giratina cannot lost impact for a one shot. But it can Star Requiem to get through the Gudras. Uh damage reduction so for those who don't know what the gudra does um it does 200 and then reduces damage you take by 80 on the next turn so of course if you get like escape rope boss that effect resets because once it turns goes to the bench it's like i don't know that all the effects get cleared looks like we are gonna nest ball maybe to get this league promo manaphy Yeah, Fabio just passing with one in the law zone is pretty awful, I will say. So, Pram is going to Colrus to get a couple of cards in that law zone. 
And now that nest ball will find him. Which Pokemon? Manaphy? Yep, looks like Manaphy. Looks like that's a non-holo promo one. The other promo one we saw earlier in the tournament was a holo one. I do like those non-holo uh, promo ones that we have now. There are a lot of people like me who just like playing non-holos. They don't warp as much, so you don't have to worry about that during a tournament. Like, all of my holo cards that I do play, like my Forest Seal Stones, sometimes I'll see the slightest bend, and I'll just completely bend them the opposite way to try to unbend them. So, like, I, I straight up try to damage my cards, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Which is why I was really gra glad when I had a place at a tropical beach that I, uh, that those were non-hollows. They're stamped, but they're non-hollow. I still have one left. I did sell three. Just because I think Expanded is just never going to come back in its current form without at least a couple of, like, trainer toolkit type things to get the, get it going again. And a substantial amount of bands. It really does need a lot of bands. Just like Yu-Gi-Oh! So Escape Rope is going to force Reading Greninja up if we attack with Cramorant of our own here from uh, Pram. We will have to hit into that Radiant Greninja potentially, so might not be the best use of an attack hitting into the Greninja, but uh, you could always follow it up the next turn with a Sableye to still knock out the Greninja and a Comfey at the same time, so Pram might not even know what he is up against necessarily just yet. Maybe he's just thinking he's against the Zamazenta version, which of course this still could be playing Zamazenta in it, but yeah, definitely a Gudra deck because we saw that Gudra V-Star in hand. So second Nest Ball here for the turn, I believe, is going to get ourselves a Giratina. I definitely would like to see that come down. Normally, you would not want to play that in the mirror match of Lost Box versus Lost Box. But in this specific one, I do think that you definitely do need the Giratina V-Star. You could always do eight damage counters to a Gudra with the Sableye. Then come up in Lost Impact, you do 280 minus 80 for the damage reduction. Uh, but looks like we are going to go for the Snorlax. So I think at this point, Pram is not aware that he's against a Gudra deck. And that would make complete sense why he is playing exactly in this way. We are also, after Mirage Gating to the Snorlax, we are going to uh, hit, put a Jet Energy on it, which forces it into the active spot. And then, yeah, it looks like Fabio has to promote first, and then we see whether or not we flip to wake up. So that is an important thing because that could choose, uh, that could potentially make it so Fabio chooses a different Pokemon to promote if he knows the Snorlax is awake. Um, I don't think in this situation it does, but just overall, it, that is the correct way to do things. So it looks like we are going to attach a metal and retreat and do a second flower selecting for the turn to get to a third card in the Lost Zone. And that's one of the things with Gudra is I always feel like it has a hard time stacking up cards in the Lost Zone. They do sometimes play Melanie, like a couple of Melanie in the deck. So that is a way to try to set up Gudras. And since Pram went into single prize mode, I think Fabio could get a lot of use out of just searching out a Gudra V this turn. Uh, it's not really too threatened by too much, unless Pram just goes into uh, uh, boss's orders and attack with the Snorlax, which would still be pretty good for him, but looks like there are two Gudra Vs in the deck right now. One Gudra V star in the hand. You could, uh, well, no, I guess you can't attach for a turn to the Gudra, but you do need it you do need it in play so that you can evolve it on a future turn. Fabio, not sure what he is going to go for at this moment. I think that even though the Gudra does not feel good to put down because you are afraid of the boss's orders, I think that's still what you have to do because Pram's bench is entirely full, but looks like he just nest balls for another Comfe and passes? Or was it the Cramorant passes? <laughs> Pram just is like, I'm fine with this. And just attacks yet again. And flips another double heads. Yeah, so the Snorlax has an, uh, has an, uh, the, uh, the attack thumping Snore says that, 
uh, you have to flip two coins for sleep instead of one like you normally would, and uh, if either of them are tails, you stay asleep. Uh, that's Norlax just being really hard to wake up canonically, so it makes sense for it, but uh, we've been able to get two double heads, which is a very small percentage of the time you're going to get double double heads. So we're going to flower select yet again after retreating. We're going to get rid of a battle VIP pass. Would have been nice to have that earlier. Here is a Colrus's experiment. This will get us to seven, which is all that this deck usually needs. Unless it's playing Sableye, but it usually doesn't even play Psychic Energy uh, for the most part. Because you need the metal and water for the Gudra. So you could play like one or two in the deck, but you don't really get a lot of use out of Sableye. You usually want to just be attacking with the Gudra every turn once you establish 7 in the Lost Zone. Looks like we are getting rid of Varoxan as well, which we would have liked to see for the next turn. So, must have been kept keeping something super important here. And it looks like we are going to force the Escape Rope so that we can attack with Cram this turn into something that doesn't want to take the hit. But looks like Greninja is perfectly fine taking that hit. Again, since you... Uh, Fabio does not most likely have access to Sableye. This 110 on the uh, Radiant Greninja is almost like not attacking because there's no way to capitalize on being able to spread two more damage counters. You would just have to hit it with something else on a future turn yet again. Just an attach and putting yourself back to sleep with the Thumping Snore. And a third double heads in a row. Are those dice loaded? No, they're transparent. They are tournament legal. They are the ones provided by the stream table. And Fabio's just laughing at this point. I don't think you can be mad about this. And at this point, I think you should scoop before you reveal the fact that you're Gudra. I think that you are in very much a losing position. You're already three prize cards behind. Your opponent has a Snorlax in play that just keeps hitting double heads. Uh, I, yeah, I think you really do have to, oh, it looks like he does play Psychic Energy, so he does have Sableye in the deck. But yeah, I, I really think that you should scoop the game before you reveal that you're playing Gudra so that Pram plays into the same type of play yet again on this turn, on, on this next game. Uh, and then you can potentially capitalize on that by putting down a couple of... Gudra's getting them going and then Pram doesn't have a Giratina setup. It can make you have a much easier game too, so long as you don't brick again. But yeah, he's all, he has revealed that he's... Oh, has he revealed that he's playing Water Energy? It still could be Zamazenta Lost Box though, in all honesty. Like, you, Pram doesn't know that it's not Zamazenta Lost Box. He, it could be Gudra. It right, looks like we are going to go for a Sableye and another Escape Rope. Again, not being punished uh, because, this you know, if the Snorlax stayed asleep, playing an Escape Rope here would be super punishing. But looks like we are going to be able to go for the Sableye attack this turn and potentially start pulling this back. I think maybe you can knock out the Manaphy and the Greninja simultaneously, take two prize cards, put the other damage counters on one of the Comfes because you can't... Uh, use effects of, like, the Snorlax blocks effects of attacks on it. Yeah, so there you go. So you have the water energy, so you can potentially Greninja later in the game. Got two damage counters left. Probably just put it to one of the Comfes. Or no, there's, oh, one to each Comfe. So that then if you set up a Sableye in the next turn, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, he has one more damage counter left. So he's just going to put it onto the third Comfe as well, just in case a switch cart does come out. And now this does give Pram the opportunity to uh, maybe put a Giratina V into play. Just in case a Gudra does come out, you might want to be able to go for the Giratina V star. Looks like we do find a Giratina V. Uh, I think we might be choosing to loss on that though. We do have we do have one in hand already, so it is fine. Along with two Giratina V stars, we just have not been able to put them into play because of the fact that we had a full bench. So now Fabio is only one prize card behind. 
And on this next turn, if he can Sableye again, he can actually uh, knock out two Comfes at the same time with Sableye. And that would put him back in the prize lead. So uh, kind of crazy that the game is actually coming to this point. Uh, and it looks like there is a switch cart, so that will remove the one damage counter from this Comfey in the active spot. Good thing that we were able to have three damage counters remaining to be able to put one onto each of those Comfeys. And now we can Lost Mine, knocking out the Sableye, right? And then putting the remaining on the Comfey, on the one Comfey. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so now Fabio still has a chance in this game, surprisingly, but he still is one prize card behind, so I don't know exactly how you're able to put this together. No, I don't think he has a chance anymore at this point, now that there's a Sableye in play from Pram. Because if you do go for the double Comfe knockout, yeah, I think maybe you got a little bit punished not putting them all in the same Comfe, but... Then again, had you put all three of those damage counters on the same Comfe, then you... Then that switch cart could have potentially healed all of them off because the one he would have promoted would have been the one with the three damage counters. So then there'd be none in play now. Yeah, so we are going to Super Rod back in a Sableye, a Psychic Energy, and maybe another Psychic. Yes, it looks like that is exactly what we are doing here. Pram has also revealed to Fabio that he is playing the Giratina version because, of course, that Giratina being in the Law Zone. So Fabio knows exactly what he has to deal with going into Game 2. But remember, this is a potentially three-game series, and you've used up quite a bit of time here already. About 17 minutes, only 33 minutes left on the clock here. So when is it the point when you reveal that you're playing Gudra? When is the point that you get that Zamazenta going? Because I do see that in hand, so it does make sense that he's playing that. So another flower selecting after switching... Gonna loss on the Gudra. Now Pram is fully aware of the fact that this is a Gudra deck, and that is a little bit scary of something to reveal at this point in this game. When you're so close to losing game one, I think it would have just been better to scoop up and not reveal a Gudra at all. And just hope that your opponent is not aware of the fact that that is what you are playing. Of course, this is a smaller tournament. There was only about 77 people in day two of the world championships. Or no, 77 people advanced from day one to day two? I don't even remember at this point. I know it was a small tournament, so maybe Pram was sitting next to Fabio at some point during the tournament and already knows that he has the Gudra. So maybe the information concealing is not as relevant as I would like it to be. But uh, now if Fabio does attack with the Sableye again to even up the prize trade, then Pram just Sableyes again on this next turn, knocks out the Comfe and the Sableye simultaneously winning the match. So, or just both the Comfe simultaneously because he did put four damage counters onto that one Comfe. And uh, since this is the Gudra version, it's not playing Switch Cart. Most likely it is most likely playing Switch. Uh, just like Pram uh, only probably has one Switch Cart. But he did get a little bit of use out of that one Switch Cart. And he might be playing two Switch Cart and one Switch. It's entirely possible. I forgot. I've seen Pram's list, but I haven't actually looked at it um, uh, too heavily. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's playing a 2-1 split. I just don't remember which way that split is. Gonna retreat the Comfe, and now we are going to Lost Mine. You have to get rid of the Sableye, otherwise it will just attack for the game on the next turn. And then I think that you just put the rest onto the other Comfe that's in play that doesn't have any damage counters on it. Looks like we're gonna spread two, so it's gonna be two on each of them now. Okay. Um, that's fine, honestly. That's a that's a good way to spread that. But now Pram has Super Rod and Colors' Experiment in hand, so... 
I don't think that deck is very large. So, Super Rod back in. Sableye Psychic Energy. Uh, it looks like a Grass Energy as well. Oh, yeah, it looks like Pram definitely had earlier uh, shown what his deck list is. Because once you see that Grass Energy, it's pretty safe to assume it's Giratina V-Star. Or, I mean, it could be Wo Chien EX. Could be Wo Chien. Could be Lost Box Wo Chien. Because apparently that was a thing. I think it went like five and three day one of worlds or something somebody told me or maybe it was four and four i don't remember which honestly still at the world championships not the worst record so we are going to mirage gate here thin the deck a little bit there is one if you mirage gate out this psychic energy without having a sable eye in play you would only have one remaining left in the deck so we are going to mirage gate just the grass energy into play just to thin it of that one. If you had maybe a water energy in the deck, maybe you could have gone for that instead. And it looks like we do chorus our way into Sableye with basic psychic energy and are able to take the game. Fabio does scoop it up now. And yeah, I think Fabio could have saved at least 10 minutes in this match by scooping earlier. He did almost make a comeback there, but I think that last couple turns was just a little bit too rough for him so pram is going to take game one uh fairly easily double flipping heads on all of those snorlax flips and uh yeah just gonna just gonna go on to game two we'll see if pram is able to take game two as well or if fabio is able to make this go to a game three if i can skip ahead far enough to where they're actually playing the game there we go. So a 1-1 Giratina prized. And Zamazenta. And a VIP pass for the other side. So not, nothing super relevant for both sides. Not too bad. We are going to go for a concealed card. Starting the Cramorant is not ideal. You'd really like to see a battle VIP pass this turn. One of them is prized. The other three are in the deck. But you can't find them. You've drawn into Sableye. You've drawn into the... Drapion, you have a Coruscant experiment, but but because you chose to go first, you can't play it. And in Lost Box Mirrors, I really think that you should be going second. And Fabio just chose to go first, and uh, is probably going to get super punished here because if uh, Pram gets the cram, <laughs> that rhymes, right? Uh, we're we're gonna we're probably not going to see a game three. In all honesty. Uh, Pram actually thinking about loss owning the Sableye, but if the game goes on longer, it will be important to keep. So getting rid of the switch cart instead, we still have a flower selecting as well. And we just need one more flower selecting here to be able to fully go for this play. So do we, Ooh, we could get rid of the path to the peak, keep the water energy, but looks like we're going to get rid of the water energy instead. So Usually these Giratina decks only play like two water energies at all just to use the uh, Greninja once during a game, really. So I'm pretty sure. No, it looks like Pram is playing a three count. But I mean, that third one doesn't matter now because you can never use Greninja to attack during this game because two of those three water energies are in the Lost Zone. You'll never have access to those cards again. It's just like banishing in Yu-Gi-Oh, like exiling in Magic. That Lost Zone is a permanent place for those cards. Although I guess in those other games, you, they've been around long enough to where they have recursion for those mechanics. But not, not in Pokemon. They make sure that you can never get any recursion out of the Lost Zone. It is Giratina's Realm, after all. Looks like we are going to put a Path to the Peak down and pass. No Cramorant from Pram. Fabio could be able to capitalize on this, is now going to be able to coerce his experiment and get the first two cards into the Lost Zone. Maybe, who? what do we Lost Zone out of this? Maybe the Iono and the Gujra V-Star? You never even used the Gujra V-Star game one. It'd be really great to swap one of those cards with that Drapion that's in the hand and loss on that thing. Uh, 
We are going to play the Temple of Sinnoh as well to shut off jet energies from the opponent so they will not be able to use their effect. They'll still be colorless energies for them, but... And we do finally find a Gudra V star, or Gudra V. It's actually funny. It looks like in, uh... I'm not sure what language Fabio is playing in, if that's... Uh, if that Gudra is maybe French, because... Uh, it says Gudra and then... Uh, the subtext after it and then the V. Because he is Canadian, so those cards might be in French. That would make sense. Because you could play English and French cards in Canada. But gets down the Gudra with a water energy. Not the worst, but was not able to attack over the course of two turns. Has only gotten two cards in the Law Zone off of one Chorus's experiment and... Yeah, this is really great for Pram here. Uh, he should just be able to continue building up this Lost Zone. And we might see his own cram, atta cram attack this turn. Or maybe we might even be able to see the Snorlax get powered up with a Mirage Gate. Looks like we are thinking about keeping the Jet Energy. Getting rid of the Grass. I think that's a fine pick, but the problem is you do need to find yet another path to the peak in order to replace the stadium or at least a lost vacuum if you're playing that. I think all lost box decks should be playing lost vacuum, but I do think the Giratina version does play less than the others. So we are going to switch card into our next confet, use our next flower selecting to put us at eight cards in the lost zone. That is a pretty large hand, hand from Pram here. So maybe Fabio is regretting the fact that he did not keep that INO off of the Chorus's experiment, but definitely needs to build his own lost zone with Chorus. So I definitely made the correct decision, but it feels wrong. <laughs> uh, three energies in the lost zone is not what you want to have here from Pram, but it looks like it is still the optimal choice we're gonna flower select yet again battle vip pass a very easy choice to get rid of and now we have the path to the peak to replace the stadium and utilize our own jet energy potentially if we want to use giratina v's attack to loss on another two cards and go to 10 cards in the loss zone. looks like that's exactly what we're doing jet energy brings the giratina active and we see an abyss seeking to loss on two more cards and looks like it's going to be even more energies from pram potentially getting rid of the mirage gate just because of how many energies we've already lost zone and looks like we're gonna go for a psychic this time and the jet energy is perfectly fine that is four base or yeah four basic energies and one special energy in the lost zone now and that does put you at 10 for pram and we got to zoom out from the game so we can see that uh, great uh, lost zone animation that looks a lot like the PTCG Live Lost Zone animation that we all know and love. They recently updated it. Instead of fixing any of the bugs, they decided why not just change exactly how the Lost Zone looks in the game. Instead of it being just a pile of cards like it should be, uh, it has to be some portal into the Dark Dimension. Uh, but the portal into the Dark Dimension didn't look good enough, so now it's a portal into a different Dark Dimension, you know. So we're going to attach a Metal Energy to the Hisuian Gudra V. Hisuian Gudra being one of my favorite Hisuian Pokemon in all honesty. I really do love that Pokemon. I have a shiny one of it. In the video games, of course. So it looks like Pram is considering going for the Mirage Gate now. Does he want to attack with the Snorlax? Looks like he is going to potentially power that up. I don't think he wants to use the Giratina to attack into this, um, into this, uh, Cramorant, potentially. I think the, uh, the Snorlax is a much better attacker for here. You can also evolve into the V-Star to potentially give it more HP. So that another Cram or a Sableye cannot finish it off. Um, but Lost impacting a Cramorant feels really bad. So 
So, looks like we were able to boss his orders here to bring up the Gudra, and now we can Lost Impact it for the knockout. Or we can Star Requiem. Is there a judge ruling? Why is play stopped? Oh, did Fabio maybe use Greninja's ability under Path to the Peak on the last turn? Oh, god dang it. They're just talking about the availability of energy cards in Pram's hand. Yeah, it looks like there's some sort of judge ruling. Here. It looks like they're looking at an issue from game number one. Second time we're seeing this happen, unfortunately, today on the stream. Oh, God, there was an issue game one again. Easy to make some of these mistakes, right? There's so much going on continually throughout the Oh, my God. Okay, so I guess we'll just uh, cut to when I figure it out. So I'm going to pause this time so I don't have to post-edit this. Okay, so... And ...is that Fabio double attached during game one? Uh, he was in a very losing position. He attached and retreated a Comfe. Or he, atta he attached to something and retreated. Then he Raihaned to another Pokemon and then attached to a Sableye all in one turn. And it was a very long turn. So, uh, yeah. So, if there is any penalty, it is going to be to Fabio, who is already down a game. And we'll have to see if they institute a prize penalty for this game. Uh, but they already, like, he already lost game one, so, I mean, if they gave him a game loss for game one, uh, it doesn't affect the game at all, which is why these penalties, when they're caught, should be applied to either the game in progress or the next match. That other time that we saw that, uh, penalty happen, happening, uh, previous, like, uh, in game one, and then game two was won by the same player who won game one. And then they forced a game three because they retroactively gave him a game loss after already saying it was going to be a two prize penalty. And that affected that game quite a lot because they ended up tying instead of him winning. And they could have just applied that game loss to the next round if they really wanted to. Or at least the prize penalty to the next round had they wanted to do that. Or the pri prize penalty to the current game in progress. Like, whenever it's caught, it should be applied to that game, but, you know, I'm not the one who makes the rules. And especially since these types of catches are only happening during the streamed matches, they're happening, like, they're being caught by, like, Twitch chat, and then being applied, like, 20 minutes later, <laughs> so... Like, just apply it to either the game in progress or to their next round. If the game has already finished, like it did in that other round that we saw. But that's really annoying. But it is the World Championships. You have to make sure that your play is as clean as possible. I knew that there was a there was a really old man who used to play at my locals. And he would, he would actually have a supporter marker. You know how a lot of us have ability used markers? He had a supporter used marker. Uh, and an energy attached for turn marker that he would flip over. Which I think at that point is a little excessive, but I mean, if you really have that much trouble knowing when you attached or not for turn, uh, then you definitely need something like that. So it looks like Fabio is going to be going into the Greninja attack this turn, maybe knocking out Double Comfe to even up the prize trade. Uh, Pram will be uh, forced to... Uh... Yeah, Pram will no longer have Comfes, and he'll only have Snorlax and Giratina as his Pokemon in play that can attack. So this is actually a good turn from Fabio, because now 
Fabio can take the two prizes off the two Comfes. Then Pram can respond by taking a knockout with his Snorlax onto the Giratina, potentially. And then... Fabio can maybe Sableye to the Giratina? I don't know. It, it still feels like a weird position to be in. Because that Giratina just has too much HP. But if Pram is able to maybe get down the uh, Manaphy this turn, uh, he does have a Nest Ball. Uh, we might be able to see at least some protection from a Greninja attack. Another Greninja attack, at least. And yeah, that Giratina does not feel like it's doing much of any good right now. He did uh, use the V-Star power to knock out the Gudra on that previous turn. Uh, the, when they were making the judge ruling. But uh, yeah, now I guess we could lost impact, but we'll just be lost owning a little bit more energy. It looks like we are going to go for the Cramorant instead here. You could always cram attack. You could switch and make it so... Like, you could escape rope so that your opponent is forced to put one of those Pokemon up. But you'd still want to find a Manaphy if you could. Uh, in case that Greninja does attack again. It could put 90 damage to two Pokemon. And then the Sableye could come and clean them both up after that. So, I think maybe the Giratina would still have enough HP. No, I think you might be able to knock out both the Giratina and the Cramorant if you were to uh, Greninja to both of them. Looks like Pram is going to get rid of his own Greninja here. Not sure how I feel about that. Well, yeah, I definitely get rid of it here because he's already lost on two water energies. Makes perfect sense. Now we have all the power that we need on this Norlax to take the knockout on the Greninja. And maybe we just try to attack with Cram on the next turn with uh, maybe an escape rope or just a regular switch or switch cart. Looks like double tails this time. Uh, well deserved after those three triple heads. Looks like for turn, Fabio draws a Jet Energy. Not going to do him too much good here. I guess it could allow him to get some more Flower Selectings off and then attack with Cramorant after that. But I don't think you want to attack with Cramorant here. See, so yeah, it looks like both players are in pretty awkward positions. Uh, I would really like to see Fabio be able to recycle the Greninja, Mirage Gate to it. Attach for turn, switch into it, and then just hit into both the Cramorant and the... Uh, and the, uh... Giratina V-Star. I've been recording so many matches in a row that I'm so tired. And it's almost midnight. I'm trying to at least get through day two. Well, at least the day two Swiss I'm trying to get to before I hit the hay. Unless I just have the energy to just keep going. I did take an afternoon nap today, so. So looks like uh, three cards being put back into the deck with the Super Rod. I saw one of them was a Metal Energy. Do we get Water Energy and... Greninja back to the deck. Looks like we could attack with the Zamazenta knocking out the Snorlax here. Zamazenta does do quite a bit of damage. It does, I think it's 100 plus 120 if one of your Pokemon was knocked out last turn. Either that or it's 120 plus 100 if one of your Pokemon was knocked out last turn. I don't remember which one it is. I can never remember which one it is. Uh, but either way, you're hitting 220 with this dude. If you can maybe boss his orders up the uh, Giratina Mirage Gate to this Zamazenta and just take a big knockout, you could, again, go ahead on prize cards. The best Pram could do is tie it up by attacking with the, uh, potentially the Cram or the Snorlax. So is Fabio going to be able to pull this one out? There's 12 minutes left on the clock. If this goes to a game three, it's not in either player's favor to be able to win the match. And are we going to... Oh, we're going to attach a jet energy for a turn to put the other Comfey in the active. Use the next flower selecting to try to find Mirage Gate. Looks like we put away a... Oh, we get the metal energy that we could have attached for turn. But did we even have a switching card? 
I don't think we do. Yeah, just the jet energy. Yeah, if Mirage Gate was able to get two of the same color energy, then that would have been an easy choice. He could have Mirage... Or he does have another Mirage Gate. Does he have another Metal Energy in deck? He already had that Mirage Gate, so he could have just Mirage Gated twice to the Zamazenta. And that... Yeah, I think this is a misplay from Fabio here. I think that he had the attack with the Zamazenta. I think he was just really looking for escape rope, and it looks like Fabio was just going to concede the game? That's, that doesn't make any sense to me. And it looks like there was no penalty provided to Pram, uh, to Fabio for, like, double attaching in the last game. Unless they, like, retroactively put the two prize penalty on, but Pram won anyway, so it didn't matter. But yeah, uh, looks like, uh, Pram just ends up winning this one 2-0, uh, fairly cleanly. I don't know, that game 2 is still really rough looking for both players, but... I think that Fabio could have still continued playing it out, but yeah, I think he definitely did misplay. I think he should have double Mirage gated to the Zamazenta and then attached the jet energy for a turn, done the thing with the Comfe, retreated into the Zamazenta, knocked out the Snorlax at least if he wasn't able to find the escape rope. But, or the, the boss, I suppose. But anyway, uh, do not forget to comment, like, and subscribe, all that good stuff listed up above, and we will see you guys in the next round, second to last round, I believe it will be, of day two of the Pokemon Trading Card Game World Championships.